Hello and welcome to Filling the Sink, a podcast from Catalan News. My name is Lorca Doherty, and today we're talking about a hospital. Not just any old hospital, a very interesting hospital. I would even say a unique hospital. Nestled high in the Pyrenees, Sardinia Hospital is the only cross-border health centre in Europe, according to the website. How does that work then? Well, on today's podcast, we've got a great interview with the managing director there, Javier Conil, to explain it all, from attracting staff and patients from both sides of the border to working out how to register births and deaths in the right country. I'm also joined now by Gerard Escatchfolk. Hello, Gerard. Hello, how are you? I'm very well, thank you. I thought that we should start today with a little geography and history lesson. Not sure if you like those subjects in school. I didn't mind them, yes. <laughs> Always good to know some things. So we're talking about a hospital in Sardinia. And Sardinia? Uh, the Pyrenees. In, it's in the Pyrenees. And the interesting thing about it is it kind of crosses the French-Spanish border, doesn't it? This, mm-hmm. this county. Exactly. In fact, historically, it used to be just Sardinia, Gran Sardinia, or like Big Sardinia, as it would be in English. And it was part of Catalonia. Some people still consider it Northern Catalonia because back in the 17th century, Spain ceded the the Northern Catalonia area to France. Okay, uh, okay, I think I've got all that. So on both sides of the border, it is a culturally Catalan area. Mm-hmm, uh, exactly. the, the language as well, Catalan language is used even on the French side. Okay, it's interesting, like even if you look at a map, there's a little place, a little town called Libia, which is a, an enclave surrounded by France that's administratively part of Spain as well. So the catchment area for, for this hospital that we're talking about is Cerdanya and Capsir, which is uh, another historical Catalan mm-hmm. comarca on the French side of the border. Very cold. Very cold, yeah, I was going to say, apparently known as uh, Little Siberia. I haven't been to the hospital. You have, Jar. Tell us, I tell us to the you know, we, we've said the same, but you were there. Tell us what's yeah, like. Yeah, well, it's literally... In the middle of nowhere, <laughs> like yeah. you have some snow-capped mountains on the horizon, then some farms there. Like There is even one special farm that is split between two sides of the border. I mean, it sounds idyllic, though, you know, up, up in the mountains. I was looking on Google Maps and measuring there the hospital. I make it 800 metres from the border. So, yeah, right on the border. Now that we know exactly uh, where we're talking about, what exactly is Sardinia Hospital? You know, what makes it so special? Well... Who better to tell us than Javier Conil, the managing director? L'Hospital de Cerdanya is an entitat binacional creada per tal de donar serveis a la població. Cerdanya Hospital is a binational entity created to provide health care and hospital care to all of the population in what we like to call Gran Cerdanya and in Capsir. Why Gran Cerdanya or Great Cerdanya? Because it is both the Catalan part and the French part of the historical county of Cerdanya. It is a public hospital, but its peculiarity is that it is a binational public hospital. What do we mean by binational? It means its board of directors, its governance, its financing is 60% from the Catalan government, the Generalitat, and 40% France, the French Republic. We have introduced the word binational because we like it more than cross-border, because cross-border is still talking about borders, while binational is not. There are actually a lot of hospitals, like in France, Germany, Belgium, just to mention some relatively close to us, that have shared services. So, for certain things, residents can go to a hospital on the other side of the border, but none of these hospitals aspire to be binational, where two administrations meet at one point and decide to do something together. And that's the big difference with this hospital. That's Javier Conil, the managing director at uh, Sardinia Hospital. We're going to be hearing much more from him throughout today's podcast. Uh, so it turns out they prefer the word binational and not cross-border. So, well, my apologies if I do refer to it as cross-border. It might slip out from time to time. Um, so, Gerard, how does the hospital work? Well, as Xavier mentioned, 60% of the funding and the managing is taken care of by the CAT and Health Department. And then the 40%, the other 40%, is taken care of by the French Health Ministry. Okay. And, uh, you know, we should point out that in Spain, uh, health is a devolved power. So Catalonia is responsible for the Catalan Health Service. Mm-hmm. Something that doesn't happen in France. And one of the funny things, because obviously it's managed by two different public health 
systems. Once you get there, there's a check-in machine and you can like place like the Car Vital or the Cat Salud health cards for each system, which is The Car Vital, fun. okay, so that's like the French health card and then the Cat Salud is the Catalan health exactly. card. Okay. Mm-hmm. And I, I gather, you know, something like this, not maybe the simplest thing to set up. No, in fact, it's called and I'm quoting, Agrupación Europea de Cooperación Territorial, or should we say, Grupo Mono Europea de Cooperación Territorial. <laughs> In English? In English, it's European Grouping of Territorial Cooperation. So this is like an EU uh, idea that means that you can have this cross-border collaboration. Mm-hmm. Exactly. And it doesn't. the key thing about it, it doesn't need to be at the state level. So that's why Catalonia can, can meet with mm-hmm. France as opposed to, you know, Spain and France. Exactly. Uh, in fact... This hospital was one of the first projects here in Europe that used this opportunity and this formula of grouping themselves after it was approved by the European Parliament in 2006. And in 2016, it won the Building Europe Across Borders Award, which recognized the work between cross-border infrastructures. The hospital itself, it's you know, it's small, 35 beds, but it's very modern. And well, as you said, it won a prize in 2016. That was just a few years after opening. Mm-hmm. Yeah, exactly. It opened in 2014 on September 19th, 2014 at 7 a.m. in the morning. <laughs> <laughs> nice early start. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> Doors open there and then, but surprisingly, they've never had an official inauguration ceremony. Oh, really? Yeah, because... They said, Xavier Cuné explained to us that while there were elections in France, they couldn't open the hospital. And then when Catalonia had elections, so they couldn't find a date. Yeah. (laughs) Okay, so they agreed on plenty, but they couldn't uh, agree on a a day to inaugurate it and have a big ribbon cutting ceremony. I would have thought that there would have been uh, plenty of interest in that, but anyway. Well, they decided to give up with inauguration and just celebrate a 10th year anniversary. (laughs) Which, uh, well, that's next year then, is it? Yeah. So, well, we keep an eye out for that. Uh, So it opened in 2014, but the idea started well before that. Like a lot of major infrastructure projects, it had a lot of setbacks and delays. But the real impetus to get the project off the ground dates back to, as Javier Cornel puts it, the end of the last century, which actually makes me feel quite old. L'any més o menys a finals del segle passat, eh, del, uh, sobre el 98, 90, 97, 98, Three major things came together at the end of the last century, around 1997-98. The first was that there were heavy snowstorms that blocked all roads between Cerdanya and Perpignan for many days. This made it very difficult for French citizens who were sick to go to their local hospital, either in Prades or Perpignan. The second was that the hospital in Puig Cerda, which had been there for hundreds of years, was becoming too small and old, and so there was a need to do something. And the third major situation was that the French authorities closed the maternity ward in Prades. So to give birth, women had to go to Perpignan, 160 kilometres away, via a road that at the time was terrible. So all this led to a meeting between the president of the region on the French side, Jacques Blanc, and the Catalan president, Jordi Pujol. So the stars aligned, Gerard, which kind of made politicians think, okay, it's time to take action. Mm -hmm. It was in February 2003 when Catan President Jordi Pujol met with the president of the languedoc Roussillon region, Jacques Blanc, and decided to study the possibility of building this hospital. Works started in 2009. They planned to open in 2010, but they ended up opening in 2014. So the area that the hospital serves, before I said, up in the mountains, middle of nowhere, it's a rural area, not that many people. No, exactly. In fact, the hospital serves around 30,000 inhabitants, but because it's a very typical holiday destination, it can serve up to 180,000 people, depending on the peak holiday seasons. For example, ski season, no? Yeah, we had exactly. a podcast just a few weeks ago about skiing in, in the Catalan Pyrenees, mm-hmm. and we talked about Cerdanya a lot. Uh, in terms of the makeup of the patients, then, you know, do they get more from the north or south side of the border? How's it work? Well, that depends on the service. For example, trauma, it's 50 50 because obviously accidents happen to everyone <laughs> and you've got to go to the nearest hospital as soon as possible <laughs> exactly but more or less the population in the area is split between 60 percent south of the border 40 percent living north of the french spanish border so for them reaching this parity is like a success and as well as trauma you mentioned they've got uh, orthopedics there gynecology pediatric services surgery yeah the uh, basic stuff for a hospital it's a small hospital but it has all the basics mm-hmm. they currently have 35 beds across 60 rooms so they still have 
plenty of more room available. Okay, to so they could expand. Yeah, exactly. Uh, that extra space uh, would, of course, been useful during the pandemic. Here's Javier Cornil. Hem tingut molts malalts de Covid durant aquests dos anys. We had a lot of patients with Covid during these two years. In a hospital like ours with 30 to 35 beds, having 12 set aside for Covid was a very significant strain. Nevertheless, we met the demands. Of course, we had to transfer the most serious patients, but we were able to gain the loyalty of the local population. Besides, at a time when, if you remember, as people forget very quickly, it was a time when we were under lockdowns find at home first, and then to the town or village, and then to the county. Patients from France, as well as Spain, and from Catalonia, who were confined here, came here to the hospital. I mean, it's crazy to think about it, a hospital in the middle of COVID with all these restrictions. You couldn't even leave the house or the town, as he said. And then, you know, we had people wanting to cross an international border. Mm -hmm. Exactly. And for them, it was quite difficult because borders at the time were closed. So what Spanish Guardia Civil Police did was ask all the passport details and all the personal information from the patients living in the north side of the border to the hospital management and then allowed them to cross the border just to go to the hospital. Right, right, right. We said earlier it's got basic services, it's got a good range of services, but obviously it's very isolated, Gerard. If things get more serious, what's th what do they do? Well, obviously ambulances, but they also have a heliport, which they use a lot when we were there. They recently had used it for, well, moving a newborn baby from Cerdanya to Perpignan for immediate attention, but they also use it for, in the case of stroke, because they have a very super quality camera and even if the doctor is not in the hospital, it's like somewhere else in Barcelona or even Paris, wherever he or she is, they can like investigate and see what's actually happening. And they can even give the patient an early treatment while he or she is traveling on the helicopter. I remember once hiking up in the Pyrenees and uh, seeing a helicopter come in and land. They were picking up someone to bring them to uh, a hospital. Maybe it was. Maybe it was. Uh, Hospital Sardinia. I think. I think at the time it was. A, it was a hike that uh, again crossed the border. I think at the time it was actually on the on the French side of the border. Um, but uh, yeah. So I, basically, the, the, the where it is. Uh, hiking is popular, skiing is popular. You know, these are kind of accident-prone activities. So, you know, it makes sense to, to have yeah, a hospital there. But what you want to hear a fun thing is that you have the French Emergency Services, SAMU, and the Catalan Emergency Services, SEM, and ambulances from each service, they cannot attend any other person in the border. So, for example, SAMU cannot help anyone or any injuries here in the southern side of the border. So the ambulances can't cross the border? Ambulances, well, they can only cross the border just to go to the hospital. Just to go to the hospital? But they cannot aid any injuries on the other side. That's interesting. Like, with all the col collaboration that goes on there, uh, the fact that the ambulance services aren't able to, to cross the border. Well, the issue with ambulances, uh, it's a fact of reality that Javier and everyone in the hospital has to deal with. And here he is talking about the gap between their vision for the hospital and their day-to-day -day experiences. Si nosaltres tenim una realitat i lluitem per una visió. Una visió. O sigui, nosaltres tenim una realitat de que... We have a certain reality, but we fight for our vision. We have the reality that we answer to two administrations, but we try to treat patients as individuals, providing safe, quality care, regardless of what health card they carry. This is basic for us. Our way of approaching things is, when a patient arrives, they are treated, and then let's see who we have to inform that we've taken care of you, be it Catalonia or be it France. That's the way we operate. Of course, our staff get lots of language training because it's important, and we try to unify care protocols, whether from one side or the other, to act in a way that benefits the patient the most. This is our intention. Then, problems. We have a lot of them. Our vision of where we should be is exceptionality. So, certain things that are blocking us from moving forward could be solved by making special exceptions for our particular case. Okay, so they look for unique solutions to a unique problem, a unique situation, something that specifically works for this binational hospital. Uh, births and deaths, the absolute <laughs> basics, are yeah. very complicated. Yes, exactly. Because obviously, as there is no actual EU legislation for that specific hospital, the red the sol or sole right prevails, meaning that the land follows the rules where it currently stands. So 
Spanish legislation and Catalan legislation. Over to Javier Conil to explain more. La gent que neix aquí per dret de sol és catalana o espanyola, bueno, de fet és espanyola. Per, i clar, els francesos això eren bastant reticents. The people who are born here, by right, are Catalan Spanish. And the French were quite reticent about this. We managed to speed up procedures so now those born here can have dual nationality very easily. We also had problems with the deceased. To transport someone who died at Cerdanya Hospital who is French and has to be buried in France, at the start it cost a fortune. It was expensive and difficult. But we have streamlined the procedures and brought the costs down. Transfer procedures now take less than 20 for hours. With everyone's collaboration, progress can be made. I was laughing listening to that there, you know, describing that the French people were a little bit reticent yeah. uh, for their children to be to be Spanish nationals. I mean, well, it's, it's, it's understandable, it's acceptable. Technically, you know? they are not Spanish nationals. They are French nationals who were born internationally. Right. So it's, it's a little bit different, the process to register them on the health and the French and, register. And in fact, when it comes to nationality and stuff, like it wasn't until very recently that Spain and France had a double nationality agreement and, and that mm-hmm. you could have two passports, one mm-hmm. from each country. Exactly. In fact, they signed the agreement in March 2021 and it came into force one year later in April 2022. So not even a year ago. Exactly. Yeah. Listen, I just want to take a moment to say congratulations to everyone who got this hospital up and running because thinking about the paperwork to do with deaths and thinking about, you know, paperwork at the best of times in Catalonia, in Spain and in, well, in France, I believe. I've never lived in France. Oh, no. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. You have. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I've experienced paperwork in France. Right. So, I mean, you know, just the fact, I mean, dealing with all this stuff, I just think... I know it's Congrats not. Per- for them. I know it's not perfect, but like, yeah, well done. Similar issues with the two systems when it comes to medicines. Yeah, exactly, because French patients consume other medicines that are not registered here in the Spanish health authorities. Doctors have to search for equivalences to prescribe. Staffing is a major issue, George. Yeah, exactly, because French doctors and French healthcare workers are registered in the French health authority and their qualifications are not compatible with the ones here in Catalonia or in Spain, so they need to... There's a process yeah, that goes through a very long process. For, for, for it to be verified and, mm-hmm. and, and checked and stuff. And sometimes it is a big problem. Sent un hospital binacional, nosaltres defensem la possibilitat de que si està reconegut a França... We believe that if qualifications are recognized in France and staff are affiliated with the Medical Council in Perpignan, well, they should automatically be able to work here. It's a problem. There are far fewer French doctors working here. There is a problem when it comes to careers and salaries. A French doctor earns much more in Perpignan than here. Nurses, on the other hand, don't. We have a greater balance in nursing. Not quite 60-40, but maybe 70-30. One thing I am very curious about, Gerard, is what language do they speak in this hospital? Well, it depends on who you ask. Yeah. Because when we were walking around, you could see nurses saying bonjour so, <laughs> and nurses saying bon dia well, at the same time, which was like, it was fun. Well, well you, you understand Catalan, French, yeah. Spanish, so no problem. You could, you could, well, if, I could it, work there. You could work there. You just need to, you know, <laughs> to be, a doctor. be a doctor first or a nurse or whatever. <laughs> Um, okay. but, no, but one funny thing about languages there, now you're going to laugh, is that signs are like in Catalan, Spanish and French. So there comes to the moment that you see recursos humans, resources humans and recursos humanos. So HR, HR, HR. HR, HR, HR. Which is like, <laughs> I don't think there's no need for three. <laughs> well, with all those signs, I suppose you're not going to get lost anyway. That's it's quite complicated to be fair. Well, we're nearly done. Uh, one last word here from Xavi about how Sardinia Hospital can be an example for Europe. Demanem a Europa que ens vegin una miqueta com el seu laboratori d'experiències per... We're asking Europe to see us a bit like its experimental lab for binational management and governance, which is extremely important, and for services to European citizens, because basically that is who we are, European citizens. And we have something here that can be an experiment for management and for services for citizens. Time now for our Catalan phrase. What's it this week's yard? Advocat, judge, doctor, comes lluny, millor. Lawyer, judge and doctor, the further away the better. Yeah, perfect. 
And I guess it's self-fix. Yeah, these just, are not people you want to be seeing because it exactly. means something's gone wrong. Exactly. Avocat chucha y doto con mes lun melior. And that's all we've got time for today. Massive thanks to Javier Conil, the Managing Director at Serdanya Hospital. Thanks so much for speaking to us this week. Uh, thank you, JR, as well. Massive thanks to you as well. It's been a pleasure. And thanks to you for listening. Uh, we're back again next Saturday with another episode of Filling the Sink. Until then, for me, Lorcan Doherty, and all of us here at Catalan News, bye for now. Adieu.